So I've been rocking the Corsair K70 SE for almost three years now, and it recently broke down on me. A couple of the keys would register twice, and sometimes the keyboard won't work at all. So it actually broke down the perfect time around my birthday, which I was actually looking to buy a new keyboard anyways. So I went online, did a lot of research. I spent about three days looking at all types of keyboards that will not only be perfect for me, but also something that matches my setup's color scheme. And boy, oh boy, did I hit the jackpot. I found the Keycool SP84 and I bought it three days before my birthday and I've been using it ever since. So now that I've used it quite a bit, it's time to review it on the channel and share my overall experience with it. Are you guys always trying to find the best deals online to save money? Don't you wish there was a website that posts deals every day, not only for US, but UK and Canada as well? Well, it's time to stop living under a rock and check out dealsource.tech, a website that does just that. We have a team of intellectual people that constantly update the site with deals we find from the internet. We do all the hard work so that you don't have to. So before you spend your hard earned money or the stimulus check from the government buying something for full retail price, check out dealsource.tech. We might find it cheaper on a different website. Just like building PCs, you can build keyboards as well. And it's actually on my bucket list to build my very own custom keyboard on the channel this year. But because I have so many projects lined up on the channel, I wanted to get something that will satisfy me temporarily until I can get around to building my very own. The SP84 from Keycool is gonna do just that. It goes for $99 and it's an 80% mechanical keyboard with Cherry MX switches. I opted for Cherry Reds, however they do have Cherry Browns available as well. One of the things that drew me to this keyboard was the design and color scheme. I love the red housing around the keyboard with really thin bezels and the super clean side printed keycaps which sealed the deal for me. Now the frame is made out of plastic and I noticed a bit of flex towards the outer center of the keyboard, however there is no flex on the actual keyboard deck itself. The keyboard actually has pretty good weight to it and overall the construction is very solid. You are definitely buying a premium keyboard here. Now this is an 80% keyboard like I mentioned before so you do get your arrow keys on the bottom right corner. However, in order to make all the keys fit, they had to shrink the bottom row keys and the right shift key, which honestly doesn't bother me at all. But for someone who wants to buy custom keycaps for this board, you're gonna have a hard time finding replacements since they aren't the standard size. Speaking of size, here is the RK61, which I reviewed on the channel. It's a 60% keyboard, and we got the SP84. When you look at the side-by-side, -side, there isn't a huge difference between the two. You essentially get an extra row up top for the function keys and an extra column on the right for the navigation keys. Personally, I wouldn't mind getting something slightly bigger like the SP84 if it meant I get dedicated arrow and navigation keys, which I use a lot. All right, let's talk about the keycaps for a second. These are PBT keycaps with a texture coating on them. And this is actually the first time I've used side printed keycaps before. So I thought it was gonna be very difficult to read the text. But it had no issues for the most part because it kind of set at an angle so once you look down at the keyboard you can clearly see them however i did have some issues reading the top three keycaps in the corner because the bottom text is actually being blocked off by the keycaps in the front but it's not really a big deal once you memorize those keys popping off the keycaps we can see the metal plate underneath it and the stabilizers which by the way i found the space bar to have a lot of play in them and that's the only key on the board that is like that. The rest of the keys are nice and sturdy, and it's not something that's noticeable to me while using the keyboard, and frankly, it doesn't really affect my typing or gaming experience at all. I also noticed this type of rubber mat around the space bar. It appears to be some type of sound dampening material because it does silence the keyboard quite a bit, and I actually noticed this only on a few set of keys. The left shift key, enter key, and the backspace key all have this sound dampening material and i have to say this is a much quieter keyboard compared to your standard cherry mx red keyboard Typing on the SP84 is so damn satisfying that it makes all the other keyboards I've used in the past 
feel like Fisher Price toys. My biggest gripe with this keyboard is that it's not backlit. You know, I don't care about RGB lighting or the actual keycaps being backlit, but I would have loved to see a backlit version of this keyboard. That way the light can illuminate around the keycaps, making the text more visible at night. I did find out that the caps lock is the only key that has an LED light right above the switch, which is a nice little indicator letting you know it's pressed, but it's very subtle and you would have to lean forward a little bit in order to see it. But nonetheless, I do appreciate that it's there. Another thing to keep in mind, due to the texture coating on these keycaps, they are a lot easier to scratch. So be extra cautious if you're wearing sharp rings or have sharp objects around your keyboard. One thing I do like about the keyboard is that they included shortcuts in the function keys. I gotta have quick access to my music and calculator from the keyboard. And even though they are hidden, I appreciate the fact that they still included them by default. Taking a look at the back of the keyboard, we can see four large rubber feet as well as uh, built-in kickstands which have rubber tips on them. And they do a really good job on keeping the keyboard from slipping and sliding. We can also see the USB-C port where the cable plugs in and there are grooves on both sides so that you can route the cable any way you want, which is nice, but I'm a little offended to be honest. You know, I consider this as a premium keyboard, yet Keycool thought it would be a great idea to include this very basic, cheap, plastic USB-C cable, which isn't even that long. You know, I was expecting something more on the premium side, maybe a braided cable would have been nice, but on the upside, it is detachable, so you can use whatever cable you want. And that is exactly what I did. I got some custom cables from Space Cables. They actually customize this to match perfectly with the color scheme of my keyboard. We got the gold-plated USB-C with the white heat shrink, and we got this beautiful braided blood red coil back into a white heat shrink and then the aviator and that same color scheme is carried over to the non-coiled cable as well and i gotta say this looks so much better compared to the basic plastic cable that it comes with space cables were even kind enough to provide a discount for my viewers so if you guys want to pick up some custom cables for yourself use the code TechSource at checkout for five percent off and i'll drop a link to them down below but there was one major problem i faced while trying to use these custom cables you see the notch on the back of the keyboard wasn't wide enough to pass through these custom cables, so unfortunately I was forced to mod it. I used a jigsaw cutter and I made the gap wide enough to pass through the cable. A pretty simple fix, which was definitely worth it in my opinion. There's one last thing I wanna mention about this keyboard, and that is the colors. On the Amazon product page, these colors appeared more vibrant to me, but in person, the reds are actually slightly faded, and you can see the difference between the red keycaps and the red frame around it. It's not as noticeable, but when you look closely, you can tell there's a difference. Also, the keycaps are more of an ivory white compared to the RK61, which has pure white keycaps. So I don't know if that's gonna be a deal breaker for most of you, but to me personally, I love the color scheme and I know it's gonna fit perfectly in my setup, especially with my new mouse pad that I got from Aura. This design is absolute fire. It's actually called Fire and Ice, believe it or not. And they have two other versions of this as well, which will look insane in any setup out there. If you guys are looking to pick up a badass mouse pad or even a wrist rest for your keyboard, definitely check these guys out. They make really high quality stuff. So for just $99, this is a very solid keyboard. I love the color scheme, the design, build quality, and I didn't realize how much I needed sound dampening mats in my keyboards until I started using this. It makes a huge difference when I'm gaming with my friends on Discord because they can't hear the keyboard anymore, which means I don't have to mute my mic for every game session. The only gripes to this keyboard are the crappy short USB-C cable that it comes with, no RGB or backlighting options, uh, the switches are not hot swappable, which most of you probably don't care, and you don't get the standard PBT keycaps, so finding replacements will be difficult. But honestly, if you're buying this keyboard, then you probably prefer it the way it is. So for $100, I can definitely recommend this to anyone looking to buy an 80% keyboard. Granted, the color scheme works with your setup, of course. But that's pretty much it for the review. If you guys enjoyed it and want to see more keyboard reviews on the channel, consider dropping a like and make sure to subscribe for more tech reviews coming up very soon. I love your beautiful faces. As always, I'll see you in the next one.